Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, my name is Ben Perkins. I'm a field sales engineer for the Western United States. Uh, today, I'll be talking about Biamp's Parlay beam tracking microphones. These are part of our Tessera family of DSP products, and they take the concept of beam forming one step further by actively tracking talkers in a conference room. Uh, here's our agenda for today. I'm going to start by uh, going over beam tracking, um, the technology and how it works. Uh, from there, we'll talk about the various models of Parlay microphones that we have available. Uh, we'll discuss uh, steps on designing a system with Parlay, and uh, then we'll go into building an actual SIR configuration, and I'll show you the um, steps we've taken to make it uh, very simple to, to configure. We've got custom blocks and, uh, and everything to make it go smoothly. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the finer points of tuning the system once, the, uh, once everything's installed. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat um, and I'll uh, try to get to them as I go along or uh, I'll just address them all at the end. <clears throat> Now, before uh, we dive in, I want to mention our online trainings that are available at biamp.com slash training. Uh, if you want to learn more after today's webinar, that should be your first stop. Uh, I'm going to move pretty quickly during this hour, so um, I'm going to assume that uh, we've completed either the Tessera Specialist training or fully certified in Tessera Forte. Um, Tessera Forte certification can be uh, uh, earned online at biome.com slash training. Um, since we're on a set schedule, I'll be going fast and move past some of the basics of Tessera Forte so we can dive deeper into the Parlay mics. Um, so if you want to learn more after today's presentation, um, please check out our online trainings or reach out to your Biome rep and ask about in-person training opportunities. <clears throat> uh, we're going to start today with a quick overview of our beam tracking technology. Um, and uh, before we do that, I want to talk about beam forming, so we can build off that uh, to talk about how beam tracking works. Uh, what is beam forming? Beam forming is just the ability to shape and steer a microphone array's directivity or polar pattern. Um, if we take two microphones in a room like this and we have uh, a person talking, we know because of the speed of sound and the inverse square law that the uh, levels and the actual signal that arrives at those two microphones is going to be slightly different. One's going to be a little higher uh, level than the other, and one's going to arrive uh, at the microphone, or uh, the talker's signal is going to arrive at the microphone uh, earlier in one of the mics because it's going to be closer. Um, If we know these values along with the physical location of the mics, it could allow us uh, to do a quick calculation and, uh, and uh, know where the talker is in the room because of this. Um, a microphone array uh, is just a, uh, uh, is a, it places multiple microphone elements within a single enclosure. So uh, when you build a microphone array, you're putting many elements together um, and then you know where those elements are physically in relation to each other. Um, when we add more elements to an array, it starts to develop its own uh, static polar pattern by summing all of them together. So for example, um, that looks something like this. And as we add more mic elements, the polar pattern will concentrate more in the middle um, and those smaller side lobes uh, will appear at the edges. So that's just um, the, the, the static polar pattern of a microphone array. Um, adding DSP to the mix, uh, we can add processing to each individual mic capsule, uh, which will then generate a configurable polar pattern for the entire array. So the DSP is kind of the uh, processing that is applied to be able to uh, shape this polar pattern 
and uh, and form it into beams and, and steer it towards where we think the talkers will be. Uh, so the DSP side is what Viamp excels at. We've been making DSP for years. Uh, we started doing microphone processing like this uh, when we introduced our Devio product um, that also has beam tracking microphones. Uh, if we flip this array upside down and put it on the ceiling, the same concept uh, still holds true. So uh, we're still able to know the relative locations of each of the microphone elements, and we can steer uh, the main beam by compensating for the delay and level differences between these elements with DSP. Um, that's what uh, beam forming is, is the ability to sort of point this array of microphones towards where we think the talkers are going to be. Now, Bionic Parlay microphones take beam forming one step further by actively steering its beam to stay focused on the talker, even if they move about the room. So here, um, so here we have the uh, TCMX Parlay microphone that we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, what beam tracking does uh, it is it takes a formed beam and moves it to a point, uh, moves it to point to the active talker in the room. It's also smart enough to allow other beams to take over when the talker moves around the room, keeping them, uh, keeping the microphone focused on the talker, even if they uh, get up and walk around. Um, our beam tracking happens both in the left to right direction or around the microphone, and it also happens um, in the elevation side, so up and down. Um, <clears throat> imagine somebody sitting at a conference table, but then they get up and turn around and go right on a whiteboard. Uh, in order to properly cover this, we need to track in all angles, not just around the mic, but uh, up and down. Um, it's worth noting that the elevation that the beam will travel up will be constrained by the mic height setting in Tessera software, which I'll show you uh, uh, towards the end of this presentation. As the mic is positioned higher in the software, um, it actually limits the microphone's ability to track upward to keep it from tracking to sources in the ceiling like uh, projectors or HVAC, things like that. Um, and then as the mic height is lowered in the software, it opens up that coverage angle to accommodate talkers being nearer to the mic's zero degree angle. Um, so to recap this, beam forming is the ability to shape the lobe and point it at a specific location in a room. Uh, that's beam forming and beam tracking is actively triangulating the location of a talker and adjusting the beam as they move about the room automatically. Um, one quick note is because our parlay microphones are used to track talkers uh, and there's that automatic sense of, of tracking the talkers, uh, these are for uh, conferencing applications um, and uh, not ideal for uh, anything that needs like a mix minus or local reinforcement. So now that we've covered our beam tracking technology, uh, we're going to look at uh, the available models of the Parlay microphone um, that are available. So we have three form factors of microphone and they all have the same technology. Uh, our TCM1 is our original uh, beam tracking microphone. It's our pendant uh, style microphone that has three beam tracking zones uh, that are 120 degrees each for full 360 degree coverage. Um, just recently released, we have the TCMX, which is our flush mount ceiling microphone, and our TTMX, which is our low profile table microphone. Both the TCMX and the TTMX have uh, four 90 degree zones um, to get a little bit tighter coverage. Um, all these mics are available in white or black to match the design of your room. Um, they're all powered over PoE or PoE Plus. Uh, the amplifier models, which we're we'll talk about in a couple slides, uh, require PoE Plus. So we recommend having uh, PoE Plus available on your switch. Um, and uh, the important note is that each Parlay microphone takes just one channel of acoustic echo canceling, despite having multiple zones that can be active simultaneously. So if you have four microphones in a conference room, 
you only need four channels of uh, acoustic echo canceling, uh, which saves you a, a bunch on your uh, overall DSP spend because you don't need as many channels um, for echo canceling. Moving on, um, all of all the form factors of the microphones have extension mics that can be, that can be connected uh, back to the main mic's network box. So this allows you the ability to connect multiple microphones to a single uh, AVB connection. Uh, with our TCM1, you can daisy chain two additional extension mics, and our extension mics have the EX uh, suffix on them, uh, to the TCM1 or TCM1A network box. So that would look something like this if you had three mics. Uh, and since our TCMX and TTMX microphones have four lobes instead of three, uh, we can only accommodate two mics on a single uh, AVB uh, connection, and those connect to the network box like this. So when you purchase your TCMX or your TCMXA, you get a network box and a microphone, and then the TCMX EX is just an additional microphone uh, that plugs in with a standard uh, Cat5 e or better cable. Uh, our mics are our microphones are highly scalable. So uh, if you need more than two mics in a room, that's no problem. Just add uh, another network box and you can get another two uh, microphones. So we can do this uh, um, for uh, needing for larger rooms or for uh, reconfigurable spaces where we need to make sure we're covering all the all the corners of the room. We can just add more mics as we need. Um, it's important to note, Tessera Fortes have a proxy limit of 12 devices, so uh, we need to uh, keep that in mind when we're designing larger systems. Um, we can, uh, a single Tessera Forte can uh, support 12 uh, TCMX network boxes, um, so we need to be able, uh, if you need more than that, uh, we'll need another Tessera Forte to be able to proxy those devices. Um, uh, finally, uh, our last uh, form factor is our uh, uh, ceiling mics with op uh, our optional PoE Plus amplifiers built in. So the TCM1A and TCMXA, A stands for amplifier. Um, all, they, those both have a two-channel amplifier built into the network box. Um, these are the same um, PoE amplification circuits as is in our AMP 450BP um, and our AMP 450p, the PoE plus amplifier. Um, so with these two, uh, these two amplifier channels are powered over the same PoE plus that we get uh, from the switch and we can get 40 watts per channel uh, with, with our patented burst mode technology uh, and it's uh, capable of powering uh, four total speak, uh, ceiling speakers, um, two per channel uh, of amp. Uh, so that's great. We have one cable that runs back to our DSP. We have two microphone inputs and four ceiling speakers uh, all on one cable that goes back to our uh, DSP. So it makes insulation very easy. <clears throat> we'll take a look at that, what that would look like in action. So here we have our two TCMX ceiling mics um, all plugged over category cable. We have four of our DeSono CIC6 ceiling speakers uh, that just recently started shipping. And those actually use RJ45 connectors to uh, connect the speaker line. Uh, so we can use just standard category cabling for those too. So now here's a, a complete conference room solution uh, in one network box that's all uh, standard category cabling, one cable type, um, all easy to uh, to plug in and, and you're all set. <clears throat> so to recap, uh, we have three form factors, uh, the pendant, the ceiling, and the table. Um, the pendant has uh, three beam tracking zones. The ceiling and the table mic have four. Um, even though they have those multiple zones, uh, we are able to only need one channel of acoustic echo canceling per microphone. Uh, and the optional PoE Plus amplifier uh, allows for a um, all category cable solution, making installation super easy and, and quick. 
those are the three uh, three form factors that we've got. I just had a quick question. Somebody asked if uh, the T the Sir Forte will support twelve TCM network boxes. Uh, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Um, 12 network boxes, so technically uh, you could get 24 mics, but remember there's only 12 channels of echo cancelling on a Tissera Forte, so um, you wouldn't have enough channels of echo cancelling to support 24 mics. Um, but yeah, the uh, it's 12 total proxy devices, and uh, the proxy device is the network box, so um, that's a good question. All right, let's move on to designing a system. Um, we'll talk about uh, system design and uh, the important factors to keep in mind uh, while you're designing a system. Um, arguably, the most important um, element in a conference room is room acoustics. Uh, these are microphones, so they're, uh, while they are intelligent enough to track to talkers, um, and uh, and uh, form a pretty tight beam on them. Uh, a noisy and reverberant room will generally sound uh, not great for conferencing. So um, this is a little bit of a joke, but the most important factor is room acoustics. I also like to say the second most important factor is room acoustics. Uh, it's that important. If our room is noisy and has, um, you know, glass walls with not great seams in them so everything's reflecting and reverberant and loud um, it's that's going to come through on the conferencing side no matter what we do uh, we can't fight physics so uh, we really want to work on uh, improving our acoustics in the uh, uh, in the design phase and um, uh, work from that. There's some basic pre-qualification site measurements that uh, we can make to determine the basic acoustic properties of the room. Um, and then once these measurements have been made, we can actually have hard numbers um, that we can use to set performance benchmarks and set expectations. So um, a couple of those, uh, um, a couple of the measurements that we need to take to kind of uh, show how good or bad our room is. Uh, the first one that we'll talk about is the RT60, um, and that is the measurement of room reverberation decay time to decrease in level by 60 dB. Basically, how long does an impulse or a sound in a room take to drop by 60 dB, basically go to zero. Um, uh, so this basically just uh, describes with a number um, how long it takes for a sound to decay, um, how long the reverb time is in the room. Uh, we want to shoot for an RT60 of uh, 500 milliseconds or less when we're conferencing. We can sometimes get away with higher numbers, but um, that's a good, uh, a good benchmark to try and get to, half a second. Um, and it's important to note that a long RT60 time can't be corrected through any form of DSP. It's, uh, all has to do with waves bouncing in a physical space. So there's nothing the DSP can do to stop the waves from bouncing off the hard surfaces. Um, that's where acoustic treatment comes in, panels, um, you know, soft surfaces, all that good stuff. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about noise floor, which is just the ambient sound level in a room with the audio system turned off. Um, this is, uh, environmental or mechanical noises like uh, HVAC projectors. If the conference room is next to a busy street, we can have traffic noise that comes in, uh, you know, it, through the windows. Uh, all of those factors will start to creep that noise floor up um, and just have a louder overall starting point, um, which then means that people have to talk louder to get that signal to noise ratio that we want to be able uh, to uh, be understood um, uh, from the far end. So 
an ambient noise floor is measured in DBA SPL um, and we shoot for 35 to 40 uh, DBA SPL or lower um, for a conference room. We just we want to start with a low uh, starting level so that people can talk in their nor normal voice and there's enough signal to noise ratio uh, to be understood on the far side. Uh, some other important factors that we need to know to properly design uh, a room with parlay, uh, ceiling height. Uh, if we have a overly high ceiling, uh, you know, TCMX is probably not going to be the, uh, our flush mount ceiling mic is not going to be the, uh, the one to go with. Uh, we don't recommend going much higher than 11 feet with our TCMX. If it's really good, if it's a really good sounding room, we might be able to get away with it, but we just want to keep the microphones as close to the talkers as we can. So um, if we do have high ceilings, that's where the TCM1 starts to shine. We can get those pendants down. Um, the pendants come with a three meter cable. So you can uh, drop those down to seven or eight feet and still have that really nice uh, close, uh, close microphone experience. Uh, another factor to keep in mind is the room layout. Is the furniture in this room fixed or uh, is it a flexible space? Do they move the furniture depending on what they want to use it for? Um, this goes right in line with uh, how much of the room will need to be uh, mic'd up. Uh, for example, if it's a classroom style and they move the desks or the tables around often, uh, we may need to ensure that all the corners and all the sides of the rooms are uh, always have a microphone within uh, the proper distance so that if they push all the tables up against the wall and people are sitting there, they still need to be picked up. Whereas in a conference room, if we have just a conference table down the middle and nobody's gonna be uh, standing up and walking around and talking, then we can not worry as much about the edges of the room and we can focus our microphones on the center of the room. Uh, and then last thing to keep in mind, uh, or one of the last things to keep in mind, obviously, other objects in the ceiling, since we're dealing with ceiling mics here, uh, if we've got lights, sprinklers, access points, things like that, we wanna know about them so that we can avoid them when we're putting our design together. <clears throat> So with all that being said, um, I've put together a hypothetical conference room that I'm gonna go through uh, today. Uh, we're gonna call it uh, 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 just a standard Microsoft Teams room conference room. Uh, we're gonna say it's 26 feet by 18 feet with a 10 foot drop tile ceiling. Um, we have an RT60 of 450 milliseconds and a noise floor of 37 dBA SPL. This room is going to be a conference table down the center of the room with a credenza under the display for all the gear. Um, we're going to design in ceiling mics and speakers, and uh, we're going to, uh, we know that this is a Microsoft Teams room system. So uh, since Tessera is whitelisted for Microsoft Teams room, we're going to set this up so that we can achieve mute sync uh, in the Teams room system and change the color on our microphones when. Uh, when the mute's engaged on the touch panel. We're gonna start uh, on Biamp Cornerstone. It's our technical support knowledge base, support.biamp.com. This is a great resource for anybody that has any questions. Um, you can type in a search or you can search by, um, uh, by product category, get a whole bunch of articles um, about uh, really detailed uh, things with our products. Uh, highly recommend bookmarking that. Um, but I will uh, now jump over to Cornerstone. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, so support.biomes.com. We've got a really great uh, calculator for our Parlay microphones. Uh, we're going to do ceiling microphones today, but we just released uh, last week or the week before a tabletop microphone calculator. So uh, after this webinar, go check that one out. You can put in the shape of your table and the size of your room and it'll give you uh, how many microphones you should put on, on a table if you're using the T TMX. Um, but today we're gonna use the 
uh, ceiling microphone calculator. So as you can see, there's two steps to the process. Uh, first step is choosing which microphone you'd like to use, either the TCMX or the TCM1. Um, we're gonna, since we have 10 foot ceilings in, in, our, uh, in our conference room, we're gonna use the TCMX. So I'll put the, the ceiling height in right now. And there you see it automatically pops up uh, with, a, with a little picture of uh, what the expected pickup pattern is with the rest of these settings. Um, next setting is talker height. Uh, we can set this to either sitting or standing, or we can dial in a custom setting conference table in this instance. So we're going to say seated. Um, and then this last, uh, last part of step one is room acoustics, which um, we have words on here like poor, fair, good, great, and perfect. Uh, well, what does that mean? Uh, we've got this link that I want to show you um, that goes to another page on Cornerstone that describe these room acoustic settings. So um, these actually put numbers to uh, noise floor and RT60 to kind of uh, put your room into our uh, descriptive word settings. Um, so in, in our instance with the room that, uh, that we are talking about today, we've got an RT60 of 450 milliseconds and a noise floor of 37 dBA SPL. Uh, that puts us right in the good, good setting, right? So we're less than 500 uh, and we are less than 39. We're right on the bottom end of good. So we're gonna go with good in our microphone calculator. Um, notice that if I edge it up to fair, the diameter of the pickup pattern shrinks down because we still wanna maintain that, uh, uh, we wanna maintain a, a shorter distance from the mic to the talker in a room with uh, worse acoustics. So we'll uh, change this back to good and uh, we'll move on to step two. Uh, step two is the uh, calculating the number of microphones required based on the room. So I'll type in my room dimensions, 26 by 18, and you'll see up pops a heat map like this. Uh, this is just showing, uh, this isn't showing dB or any sort of volume measurement. What this is showing is a heat map of distance. So the colors here coordinate to how far away in feet uh, the, uh, uh, a talker is from the microphone. And as I move my mouse around, um, we actually have a distance being calculated um, right on the bottom of that heat map. So all the way in the corner of the room, uh, a talker, if they stood there and spoke, would be 12 foot three inches away from, from the microphone. Um, since we have a central conference table though, uh, this looks pretty good. If we wanted to, uh, if we decided that this calculator wasn't giving us enough coverage in our room, we can uh, always hit more and that will recalculate it and um, try and come up with a solution that has more coverage available. So in this instance, it put two more microphones in there and, uh, and that gives us um, pretty much green throughout the entire, entire room. So if, if this room had flexible furniture uh, and we wanted to make sure it was always covered, we would probably do four in this room. But since, uh, since we have a central conference table, I think two two mics here will be uh, just fine to cover uh, to cover the uh, conference room. Um, last thing I want to point out on this page um, is the uh, sound file examples that we have. So uh, we have uh, built a library of uh, sound clips where we've uh, mimicked the room acoustics of. Uh, based on our, our numbers. And we've actually recorded what that room will sound like from a given distance here, anywhere from three feet up to 33 feet. Um, so if, so for example, good 10 feet will be given this um, sound file that we can download and, uh, and, and play and we'll get an idea of what the acoustics will sound like in that room. I don't think my sound is set up to Play this over the webinar today, but um, these are available to download. Go check out 
um, and uh, it helps helps with the conversation of what is my room going to sound like um, based on the acoustics. So uh, while we're on Cornerstone, we mentioned uh, wanting ceiling speakers for this uh, as well. So I'm going to jump over to our DeSono ceiling speaker calculator that we have. Um, I've already filled it in, but uh, very similar to our Parlay microphone calculator, you put in the room dimensions, you put in the height of the ceiling, uh, and then choose your speaker that you want, and it'll uh, spit out a heat map to show you the uh, 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 recommended layout of speakers. So this is perfect for us. We need four speakers to uh, cover this room really well. And uh, that works out even better because we have that TCMXA model of uh, Parlay microphone. So that'll power four speakers from the amplifier output. So um, we'll use that for this conference room because we need two microphones and four ceiling speakers. That's uh, perfect for for that uh, for that uh, for that SKU. All right, so we've uh, used our online calculators to determine how many mics and speakers we need for this room. Uh, let's uh, go back to the PowerPoint and we'll review our bill of materials. <clears throat> so since we only need two TCMX microphones, we only need two channels of acoustic echo canceling. Uh, because of this, the Tessera Forte VT4 will work perfectly. The VT4 has four channels of acoustic echo canceling and four outputs, so uh, it's perfect. We don't need a 12 by 8 DSP for this room. Uh, we just, uh, this VT4 is going to work perfectly for us. Uh, the TCM XA, uh, not only will it connect to both TCM microphones we need, but the included two-channel PoE plus amplifier um, will be able to power the four ceiling speakers we need as well. Uh, we are going to use the Tessera XUBT USB extender. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the secret sauce, so to speak, that will allow us to have that mute sync functionality with Microsoft Teams rooms. Um, and also it'll give us uh, a, a optional Bluetooth uh, receiver in the room in case anybody wants to uh, bridge a cell phone call or play some music when they're not in a meeting. Uh, it adds a little bit of uh, functionality to the room overall. Um, we're going to connect the entire system together with the new Tessera Connect, uh, Tessera uh, connection device. It's uh, uh, four ports of uh, PoE Plus uh, so we can power um, all of our devices other than the Tessera Forte uh, with this, and it's just going to make our uh, uh, networking that much easier. We just we don't have to set this up. We just plug all the Tessera devices in and go. Finally, we're going to have four of our DeSono CIC6 conferencing speakers. Uh, I'm not going to touch on these too much. They're six and a half inch ceiling speakers with uh, uh, that are uh, low impedance, they're eight ohm boxes, and uh, they have that RJ45 speaker connection that will work perfectly with uh, to use category cable to connect our amps, uh, to connect our speakers to our TCMXA uh, network box. These also come with tile bridges and everything you need, so uh, just that, uh, that's all that's needed. Uh, and then since I'm here in California, uh, I need the uh, TB1 tile bridge for my uh, TCMXA and TCMXEX mics. Um, that is an optional SKU, so if you need a tile bridge or want a tile bridge for your uh, ceiling microphones, uh, the TB1 is the SKU to, uh, to add on, one for each mic. So we will uh, show what it looks like all connected together. So uh, um, we've got all of our devices here that we just spec'd out, uh, starting with the AVB. 
uh, we're going to connect everything through the to, through the Tessera Connect. So uh, the Tessera Connect is going to uh, build the AVB network for all of our devices uh, and act as the bridge, and uh, that is going to also power the XUBT and the TCMXA. So we don't need to worry about any PoE injectors. Uh, also, uh, sort of included in that is the TCMXA and TCMXEX. Important note is that there's a 33 foot maximum cable length between the uh, Parlay microphones and the network box. All the other uh, AVB connections have uh, the same distance limitation of Ethernet or 100 meters, but this connection is uh, a proprietary uh, connection to the microphones uh, from the network box, so it uh, can only go 33 feet or 10 meters. Um, typically, since we're locating that network box in the ceiling, uh, 10 meters is going to be more than enough, um, but it is something to keep in mind uh, if you've got uh, an overly large room or, or something like that. Uh, next, we'll connect the speakers. So uh, we're still using the same um, category cable because our both our amplifier outputs and our speaker inputs have uh, RJ45 connectors. Uh, we're using standard Ethernet pinouts on these, so if you've got any pre-terminated cables, you can use those as well. Um, we're running speaker level over category cable, so we're doubling or we're using four four of the pair, uh, two pairs for positive and two pairs for negative in our speaker line. Um, there's a through port on the back of the CIC6, so we can daisy chain two speakers from each channel on the amplifier. Um, the last connection that we're gonna have is from the Tessera Forte AVB VT4 control network to the, uh, uh, to the control, control port to the control network. Um, that's so we can send our configuration and uh, if there's a third party control system, we'll be able to control it through there. Um, I'll mention one more time, because I think it's pretty cool. All the connections that we have here are standard category cable. So it's one cable type for the entire room um, and it's all, you could use all pre-terminated cable if you wanted to. So now that we've got our um, our uh, microphones, uh, we've got the room spec'd out. We're going to actually jump into the software now, and I'll show you how to build the configuration. I've got a starting point here that uh, we'll start with. I've already pre-populated this with uh, various blocks that don't relate specifically to the Parlay microphones. Uh, just to save some time, but we've got our XUBT Bluetooth and USB inputs. Uh, we've got our uh, uh, custom block that we've got for our uh, CIC6 to tune that and um, all the various meters and, and mixers and things. So um, from here, I will uh, um, start adding our, our microphone. So the first thing we want, obviously, is our Parlay microphone. We've got a microphone section of our input blocks that uh, is uh, the first one on the list. So I'll just drop in a microphone. I get our initialization, initialization window where we can choose the type of microphone we want to add to our configuration uh, with this drop down. So I can do TCM1, 1A, uh, XXA, and TTMX. Um, we are using the TCMXA today. So I will select that. Um, and then the next step is how many microphones are going to be attached to that network box. So one input means there's one mic attached to it. Two inputs, obviously, we're using both of the microphone inputs, and we've got two mics attached to it. Uh, you'll notice if we switch this to a TCM1, like I talked about earlier, you can daisy chain three mics on a TCM1 chain. So that drop down menu changes to three when I'm using the TCM1 pendant. Um, because it, uh, because we, we can daisy chain that many mics. Um, so for the we're using the XA. You'll notice that the checkbox for the use the amp block uh, automatically uh, gets checked when I choose the XA. We're using two mics today. 
the next uh, the next step is uh, the define the LED logic. So by default, our Parlay microphones will just follow the mute status of their block. So if you mute the block, the uh, LEDs will change from green to red. Uh, we want to have this set up so that it is um, following the status of the uh, Microsoft Teams room mute status. So we're actually going to control these by logic. Um, mute mics is a group and enable logic outputs. We can do we can leave those as they are um, for today um, because we just have one room to do it. So from here, um, we've got that. Oh, I also would like to show. Um, I forgot the configuration of the amplifier. Um, we can bridge the two channels down to one if we wanted to, uh, but for now we're going to use two because we need four total speakers. So we're going to do two on each. Uh, so we're going to make it a two channel amp. That gives us the TCM XA block with all of our logic inputs, and it gives us our parlay amp two channel block. I'm going to move this uh, amplifier block over to the uh, to the output side and I've got my microphone right here. I'll connect uh, to my meter. Uh, next I will grab a couple channels of acoustic echo canceling. Um, I'm going to do two inputs because you've got two mics. Uh, since it's a pretty simple uh, system I'll just use the pass-through block because uh, my routing is not going to be anything crazy. Um, important things when we're designing with Parlay, um, I can choose whether or not I bring in the analog input block. Uh, since we're just using network microphones, I'm actually going to uncheck that because uh, I don't need any analog inputs in my configuration uh, in this specific one. If I needed them, like if I had some program audio I wanted to bring in, sure, uh, check that box and you can bring in audio. But uh, for this instance, I'm going to uncheck that just to, to keep my uh, configuration clean. Um, this important checkbox here, pre-configure for beam tracking mics, this is going to set up the echo canceling to work the best with our Parlay beam tracking mic. So whenever you're using Parlay, make sure to check this box for uh, beam tracking microphones. Um, that will show up on the AEC block as this little BT in the uh, bottom corner. Uh, that is just a visual indication that uh, this uh, this block is set up for beam tracking mics. So I'm going to uh, set this up. I'll connect my AEC reference through there and connect it to my amps. And uh, then I will also connect my mics to my AEC. Uh, the last uh, blocks I want to show you are the new processing library blocks. So this little uh, library bookshelf uh, icon, which is by default, it's on the side, but it also could be up here on your, uh, on your toolbar. If you've closed it previously, you may need to reopen it with this little uh, bookshelf icon uh, in the menu. But we have now uh, a library of BIAMP parlay blocks like you see here. And this is uh, basically uh, shortcuts to auto mix down a given number of microphones here to uh, just to make uh, to make it quicker to deploy these. So anything from six down to one single mic, if I drag the two in, you'll see this has given us a custom block that has uh, all of the processing we'll need uh, built in. Uh, so it's got our EQ. It's got a beam tracking auto mixer, and you notice this auto mixer also has a BT uh, on it. So it is actually uh, um, uh, defaulted to a setting that works best with our uh, beam tracking mics. And then we have uh, acoustic, uh, analog, or I'm sorry, automatic gain compensation, AGC, uh, here on the uh, post auto mixer. And that's just going into a mixer after that. and. Uh, out one channel. So now I'm taking multiple channels of microphone, multiple microphones in, and I'm uh, on the output, I just have one single uh, microphone mix. So it makes it very easy to, uh, to deploy and mix these microphones together. Uh, from there, that is, um, 
that is all the blocks there. I will now uh, move over to um, the next the next step here, which is uh, uh, I've added the logic that's necessary to do the mute sync, and I'll just try to explain that uh, quickly. But uh, essentially, uh, when with the, when you're using the Tessera XUBT USB extender that has HID support built into it, so it's able to read when the Microsoft Teams uh, meeting is muted, and it'll actually send that signal back to the XUBT block and go high on the mute um, output uh, logic output here. Um, since we've set up our LEDs on our um, Parlay microphone to uh, react to logic inputs. I've got um, the mute block here, which is just a pass through connection. So this is going down here. I've got this connected to the red and green indicators, uh, which is going to turn the LED red or green based on the status here. And so if, if this is low, the LED is going to be red. If this is high, the LED is going to be green. So if if the meeting is muted in Teams, the indicator will show high on the output of the XUBT block here, but I need to flip it because high is green and I want it to be red when it's muted, right? So I'm actually sending it through this NOT gate. So anytime the XUBT is showing high or muted, it's going to flip it and give it a low status so that the LEDs turn red. Um, so that's just going. That's controlling our red and green um, logic state. Uh, logic state there. Um, the next one that I've added is I've taken the CS, which stands for connected and streaming, which are these two statuses here. I've taken both of those from the input and the output USB blocks, and I've sent them all through a pass through to this AND gate. Uh, and the AND gate means that um, the output won't be high unless all the inputs are high. So basically what this is saying is um, don't send a high signal out unless I'm sending and receiving audio over USB. Um, so this is essentially saying anytime the meeting is, anytime there's a meeting going and there's audio passing back and forth actively, uh, that will then turn this indicator high. And I've got this going to the LED indicator, which is, um, uh, low is off and high means the LEDs are going to turn on. So essentially what we've done here is anytime the uh, audio is passing uh, in a Microsoft Teams rooms meeting, the LEDs are going to turn on on the mic to show that a call is active and then they will react green or red according to the mute status. Um, we've got a example file on uh, Cornerstone that shows this uh, if you want to go there after this and download it and uh, dig in deeper to the to the logic. Um, so finally, I'm going to show uh, quickly just the um, uh, just a couple of of uh, uh, things to keep in mind when you're commissioning these systems. Um, obviously, the only uh, the only setting that we need on the mic is if you double click on the TCMX, we have the height above finish floor. So that can be set per mic, and uh, we have, uh, I have this, uh, you can set these at 10 because that's our setting. Uh, that's where our ceiling is in our, in our room. If we needed to clamp down the pickup to get over a table and we wanted to avoid some hard surfaces, we can cheat this up just a little. Remember, uh, I mentioned at the beginning, our height indication is just a, it's just telling the mic how high it can uh, aim up towards its zero degree um, level. So if we wanted to limit that a little, we can tell it that it's, you know, maybe a foot higher than it actually is, and it'll not allow itself to aim up towards the ceiling. So definitely listen to the far side as you're making these adjustments and see if that's sort of uh, uh, clearing up any. Um, if that's making it uh, if that's making it better when you're commissioning. Um, from there, uh, the other uh, settings here would be things like EQ. By default, it comes with a high pass at 170 hertz. I've gone in and added a couple of 
you know, I've cut out a couple of frequencies just to show, uh, but then you can uh, copy the DSP data and paste it to the other uh, EQs to copy those settings over. Um, you shouldn't need to, uh, only in rare instances, I, as, at least I've found, should you have to uh, mess with the auto mixer. Uh, AGC, you may need to dial in depending on uh, what what your your room is like. Um, so uh, check your your meters and see if the AGC. One thing to note is we set up the AEC for beam tracking, um, and one one thing that that does is that actually bypasses the AGC on the echo canceling block uh, because we find it works better if we do it post auto mixer here. So that's these two blocks work in conjunction with each other. Um, uh, one thing you'll notice on this is I've added an advanced compressor. Um, this is if we're dealing with a higher than average noise floor, sometimes it'll help to put in a advanced compressor with a, a couple of knees on it. And the second knee will actually dip down uh, here. And what this is doing is, is, is when there's no, uh, no talkers active, it's sort of you know, kind of pushing the noise floor down into the, uh, 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 down a little bit. Um, so the advanced compressor can help out with that uh, as well. I just also wanted to show uh, the equipment table is set up um, and we have uh, the proxy host name here. You'll notice that I'm selecting my Tazira Forte and then the uh, expander devices are all being proxied to that Tessera Forte. So um, that's uh, just a, another step to remember is after you've assigned not only the serial number of the TCMXA and XUBT, you also then need to tell the equipment table which Tessera Forte is going to be the proxy for that, uh, for that expander. Um, and with that, uh, that is the uh, end of my presentation. Thanks again, everybody. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, check out the uh, Parlay microphones, and uh, I hope it was uh, informative. Thank you.